This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hi guys, it's Kaz and today I'm going to be talking about the books I have not finished yet. So the books I'm talking about today aren't ones that I actively DNF'd or did not finish and by that I mean books that I read and are really not enjoying or for one reason or another have to put down and can't continue reading. So I decide to stop reading the book and will probably never pick it up again. That's a whole different scenario. The books I'm going to be talking about today are the ones that I picked up, in most cases were very much enjoying, but put it on pause and never got back around to reading it again or kind of forgot. It's become a bit of a bad habit. I have about 14 or 15 books on this list. Some of these date back to 2018, so they're long overdue for a read. I don't, I just, why do I do this to myself? I really don't know. The first one I'm going to talk about is one I am very much ashamed of and furious with myself about because I was loving it so much and I have been quite vocal about how much I've been enjoying this series so far. And the fact that I haven't finished book two yet is mind boggling to me. And whilst I was pulling together all of the books for this video, I realized that I also seem to have misplaced my copy. And that is The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin. So the second book in the Broken Earth trilogy, I adored the fifth season. I started reading The Obelisk Gate and from get go it was a five star read and I got through a little more than half of it. But I put it down. I'm pretty sure because I had another readathon and it didn't quite work for the prompts, or at least I think I chose a graphic novel instead because it was going to be much quicker to read. And then I just never got back to it. So I still haven't finished reading The Obelisk Gate. I'm so mad at myself. I'm furious. And now the fact that I don't even know where my copy is, I can't fix this problem. So now I'm just in a bit of a pickle with this one. I desperately want to finish it, but will have to find my copy of the book first. The next book I have on my list is Emma by Jane Austen. I started listening to the audiobook for this and I was my intention was to read it before going to see the movie adaptation and I just didn't get around to doing it. It was right before lockdown. I don't know if I actually checked but I was assuming that the movie was still showing in cinemas right when lockdown started. Either way, it got to the point where I was like, well, I'm not going to be seeing this movie anytime soon. I have other books I need to read first. So again, paused listening and I haven't gone back to it yet. While we're on the topic of bad habits that I'm wanting to break out of, let's take a moment to talk about the sponsor for this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes on a whole range of different topics. You can learn about photography, illustration, design, video, marketing, even productivity. One of the classes that I've really enjoyed is the Productivity Masterclass by Thomas Frank. Thomas Frank is actually a YouTuber that I've been subscribed to for quite a while now and really, really enjoy his videos. So I was very excited to see that he was on Skillshare with his own masterclass all about productivity. Because as I'm sure you can guess, I need a little bit of help in this department. And honestly, there are so many different types of classes for a range of skill sets too. And the way that they're formatted as well is very easy to fit within your schedule. If this sounds like something you'd like to give a go, I I have a link in the description below. The first 1,000 people to use the link will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Skillshare's Premium Membership gives you unlimited access to all of the lessons on the website and after your trial is done, if you want to continue, it's quite affordable as well. If you do an annual membership, it ends up being less than 10 US dollars a month. Don't forget to check out the link in the description, give Skillshare Premium a try and test out some of the classes to see what you can learn. But now let's go back to shaming myself about all the books I forgot to read. Another one I'm deep deeply ashamed of is Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. So this one I was buddy reading with a friend and we got about 100 pages into it but it was kind of slow going because we were like facetiming to read together and unfortunately it was just getting to the point where because of time zones and my busy ass schedule it was getting harder to FaceTime each other and read and then it just kind of fizzled out so here we are. I will remedy this, I promise. I'm gonna finish Crooked Kingdom soon. I'm just gonna have to start from the beginning again. This one I suspect I might have even started before 2018 because I've tried to read this twice. One time I got 135 pages in and the other one 174. And that book is Clockwork Prince by Cassandra Clare. I very much enjoyed Clockwork Angel. I really enjoyed it, digged it. I was excited to continue the series, but I never succeeded in finishing it. I think I was mildly bored, but not disliking the book. But the fact that I was mildly bored made this very easy to put down, to focus on other things, and then months and years have passed. It's been 84 years. 
feels like it. I can't remember a single thing. Girls Made of Snow and Glass by Melissa Bashadoust. So this one, I have a distinct memory that I'm listening to this audiobook while I'm at an airport. I can't remember where I was going, where I was coming from, why I was traveling, what does traveling even mean? But I know that I was reading this one and I think it was for a readathon. And as is going to be the case with a lot of these books, if I didn't finish it by the time the end of the readathon happens, then I kind of ran out of time because I was onto the next readathon or the next book club book or the next priority thing. And it fell by the wayside. I don't even remember anything about it. I think I was enjoying it. Mythos by Stephen Fry. So this is a non-fiction, again, one I was listening to on audiobook, and it was kind of my go-to when I was in between things or needed to put something on in the background, because this is all about the Greek gods, Greek mythology, which I really adore. And I was having a great time listening to this. Couldn't tell you why I stopped. I got an hour from the end and it was a great time. I must have just had to pick up another audiobook and then never remember to go back to it. I'm sorry. We have another book, A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. So this is again one that I was reading for a readathon. It was last year I believe, one of the Tome Topple readathons, and I of course didn't finish it by the end of the readathon, but after it finished I did give it another couple of goes, like dipped back into it, but I think it's just not the book for me at this time. It's a very hard-hitting, devastating book. It explores some very dark themes and is very emotional and hard-hitting, so definite trigger warnings to like depression, mental health, suicide, assault. It's just... I'm sure you guys have heard about this and how sad it is. And I just am not in a good enough mental space to read something so devastating. I did manage to read a good chunk of this though. I got quite far into it and I had read some of the really hard-hitting scenes but I was just absolutely terrified about what was going to come next and I think that thought just made me very hesitant to pick it up frequently and then I just kind of eventually forgot to think about it altogether. <laughs> so I have every intention of finishing this but I think I just need to be in a better space mentally for it because it's going to take its toll, I'm sure. Tunnel of Bones by Victoria Schwab. So this one is another one that I have been buddy reading with a friend over FaceTime. Once again, because of time zones and my schedule, I make it very difficult for this to happen. It was actually Red who's been reading it to me, so I haven't been keeping tabs on how far into it we've gotten, but I, I'm recognising a lot of this. So I'd say we'd be relatively far into it, maybe halfway. It's just been a few months since we've had the chance to read it together. We did manage to read City of Ghosts together in a much more timely fashion, but this one's taking a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer. The Winter of the Witch by Catherine Arden. I think this is another one of those instances where I was listening to the audiobook during a readathon. The readathon ended, I had to jump onto the next important thing, and unfortunately it just didn't get touched again. <laughs> which I'm very sad about because I've been very much enjoying this trilogy. I got like halfway through Winter of the Witch. It was so close to finishing the series, but I think it was probably for the best that I put this on pause because I do remember a couple of points while I was listening to it zoning off for a longer period of time and feeling like I'd missed a lot of information, kind of important information. So towards the point where I stopped reading this book, I knew that I'd probably want to start from the beginning again. So yeah, I will get back to this. We'll start from page one <laughs> and hopefully finish the series very soon. The first book in this series is The Bear and the Nightingale, by the way. Would recommend. Another one I have is The Melancholy Death of Oyster Boy by Tim Burton. So this is actually a series of poems and I've read a few poems. I'm only like 10 pages into it and I've been really, really enjoying it. But for whatever reason, I was like, oh, I'll just dip into this, give it a whirl. And then I stopped, intending to go back and read it in its entirety at another stage, but I just never did. And I don't know what I was saving it for. Couldn't tell you, can't remember a thing. This time my bookmark is The Receipt, I'm pretty sure, from when I bought it. But like, it's Tim Burton. It's, it's weird, it's dark, it's creepy, and I really, really loved what I read so far, so 
I will get to it. Next I'm going to be talking about A Clash of Kings by George R. R. Martin. I tried reading this for a second time in the recent round of Tome Topple and this one I did discuss in my reading vlog how this is the second time giving this a go. I've gotten to roughly the same point both times about the 360 page mark and I just it's not quite hooking me enough to drive me to keep going. So it's not a case of, oh, I have time to read something, but I don't feel like reading this, so I'm just going to read something else. It's like this literally, I literally forget as soon as I stop listening to it that I'm in the middle of this book. It just doesn't cross my mind to continue reading it. And the only reason I made it so far is because I had a readathon reminding me almost daily to pick something up. But even still, on like half the days during the readathon, I didn't pick up the audiobook and kind of started forgetting about it then. So this is an interesting case. I'm also kind of like, is that a sign that I should not continue reading it? Of all the books, this is the only one that I'm kind of intending on finishing, but I'm not entirely sure yet. I haven't made up my mind, but I'm, I'm willing to be persuaded. Let me know. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? I mean, I have watched the TV series, so it's not like I don't know what's going on. And now for, I think, the last book on this list. There very well may be more books that I have actually forgotten about and don't have written down in any of my spreadsheets that I'd started it. As we've all figured out by now, I'm very forgetful, so this is a, a huge possibility. But I do want to mention that there are some books that I have gotten partway through and didn't finish, but those were rereads. So I have previously read those books in their entirety, but I was rereading them for like a book club or a read along, didn't finish it in time, and decided that I wasn't going to read to the end again. So there's a couple of rereads that I could talk about, but I'm not going to. We don't need to make this list any longer. But now, <laughs> the last book is The Sandman by Neil Gaiman. The Sandman and A Clash of Kings are both ones that I was reading during the Tome Topple and are kind of the closest to being actively read, but because I hadn't read anything in September, it has been more than a month month and a half since I've read these. So yeah, we also have The Sandman Volume 1 by Neil Gaiman. Graphic novel series. This omnibus is over a thousand pages. She's a huge one and it's a little bit daunting, but I've been really enjoying what I've read so far. That only being like 125 pages, I think. It's a tricky book to read physically. It's heavy. I'm like, I'm resting it in the crook of my arm because it's it's hurting my wrists to hold this up. I will read this. I will read this. It's the perfect time for it. But it's just very difficult to read. You can't be lying in bed. It, it's physically impossible. I can't do it again. Those are 15 books that I started and forgot or haven't yet had a chance to finish. I'll admit it, I'm very sad, I'm very ashamed, but part of the reason why I wanted to film this video is so I have a solid record and I can go and tick all of these books off my list when I finally get around to reading them. Hopefully it doesn't take another three years for me to actually complete these. I don't have any intention of doing a follow-up to this and letting you know when I do finish them, unless I could do like a readathon where I try and finish all of the books that I previously started but didn't get around to finishing. The only issue is with quite a few of these it's been long enough that I would want to start from the beginning again so it wouldn't just be partially reading 10 books it would be partially reading three and starting all of these ones from the beginning again. But uh, if you're interested, let me know and I will consider it. But that is all that I have for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget to check out the link in my description as well. The first 1000 people will get a free trial to Skillshare Premium, which I would honestly really recommend. I've been using it for a while and really enjoy a lot of the classes I've taken so far. So I'll see you guys soon with a new video, but until then I'll talk to you in the comments. Bye!